One. Endorphins. That was supposed to be the point of this. After a whole damn day of clients working my nerves, I'd come home and shoved my tired limbs into my cutest stretchy outfit, aching feet into overpriced ugly shoes, and ignored my headache to blast something raunchy and bass heavy in my ears. You should go for a run. You could use the endorphins. I couldn't even blame anyone else. I'd made the suggestion to myself for myself, so it was all my fault I was out here in the dark. No endorphins were happening. Maybe I was too tired, too stressed, or maybe the paved trail through the heavily wooded Blackwood Hills was too creepy. Even though it was well lit, with posts every few feet, I couldn't relax. I'd run this trail a million times, in rain and fog and blazing sun, but always in the daytime. Then I appreciated the serenity of it, out there with nothing but the sounds of nature and the occasional encounter with a neighbor, in the community sense, out at the same time. It was dead quiet now. A little fact I only noticed because I'd found it necessary to pull my earbuds out. I didn't need anything muffling what was happening around me. The silence was unsettling, to the point that I rubbed my ears, even tapped the sides of my head, wondering if I was the problem. Nope. No birds. No bugs. Just the roar of my own heartbeat. The shuffle of my rubber soles on the pristine asphalt path. My pace slowed as I approached the bridge. My path was taking me under it, running right along the creek that fed into Lake Black. I always sprinted to hurry and get past this part. It was kind of creepy, even in full light. I stopped short as my eyes caught movement before I could process what I was or wasn't seeing. The nearest street lamp flickered, then went dark. Nope, I said aloud, then turned my ass right around, taking off at full speed. Excuse me, I heard from behind me, something about the voice hitting me with the same feeling of ice water down my back. It was so close behind me, too close. <laughs> I screamed, staggering to a stop as my path was suddenly blocked. A tall figure in a black hoodie and black sweats was right in the middle of where I needed to go to get back to the safety of my home. My feet wouldn't move. Did nobody ever teach you? It was rude not to speak, he asked, tipping his head up. As I tried to peer into the dark opening of the hoodie, struggling to make out a face, it struck me that all the street lamps were out. The only light was the moon, barely filtering through the heavy canopy of leaves. My hands went to my pocket, easily fitting around the pepper gel I kept on me for moments exactly like this. I was taught not to talk to strangers, actually, I said. I'd appreciate it if you moved aside so I can go on about my business. What's your name? He asked, stepping a bit closer. Now I could see a bit of his face. Pale, parchment-colored skin, red-rimmed eyes. He was perfectly still, not huffing and puffing like I was after my attempt to get away from him. Sharon, I lied, giving him my designated name from back in my clubbing days with my friends. Okay, Sharon, I'm David. And just like that, we're not strangers anymore. I forced a smile to my face. Right. Well, next time I see you out here, I'll make sure to speak, okay? I am never stepping foot on this trail again. Why can't you talk right now? He pushed, taking yet another step closer. The proximity pulled my stomach into immediate knots. I shook my head. I just, I need to finish up my run. Get home, get some sleep, go to work. You know the grind. I wrenched out a laugh, trying not to show just how uncomfortable I was. It was nice to meet you, though, I said, stepping to the side and further down the path, keeping a wide berth between us. Did I want to turn my back on this man? Of course not. But I needed to get away from him. How about I walk you home? He offered, 
in a tone that didn't really give the vibe of his suggestion being optional. It's not the safest thing for a woman like you to be out alone at night. Never know what you might run into, huh? A new voice broke through the unsettling stillness of the night from behind me. I whipped my head around to find the newcomer standing a few feet away in running gear himself with a large dog seated beside him, a very large dog. It looked at me, bored, then at David, a low growl rumbling from deep in its chest as it fixed on him. Are you okay? The man asked, and I started to nod, but then didn't, couldn't. He's scaring me, I admitted, but not because I wanted to. I just couldn't overcome the compulsion to tell the truth. He looked to David. You hear that? You're scaring her. David's face twisted into a snarl. What the fuck does it have to do with you? Everything, the man said, then stepped into a patch of moonlight, further illuminating him. Vaguely, he seemed familiar, but just the fact that I could fully see his face was comforting enough. David's reaction to him was a welcome extra. He must have recognized him too because he instantly shrank back in the inexplicable chill I'd been feeling. Was suddenly gone. The street lamps suddenly illuminated the path again as David took several long steps away from me. My bad. I swear, he stammered, hands up. I didn't know, but you should have known, shouldn't you? The second man asked. You're out of bounds. I wasn't thinking clearly. Found something safe to do. Yes, Mr. Black. I'm sorry. Just get the fuck out of here. He wasted no time. He took off running at a speed that seemed impossible, but it wasn't the most pressing thing at the moment. Ambrosia, you should get home. I turned back to where Mr. Black was standing. His dog was no longer seated, but poised right beside him, staring in the direction where David had disappeared. How do you know my name? I asked, taking a step back from him now, even as a smile spread across his face, a beautiful smile, adorning a strikingly handsome face. Wow, I'm a little offended. Should I know you? I asked, my mind blanking on who he could possibly be. Yes. In spite of his offended claim, the smile remained on his face as he approached me. Running out here alone at night isn't a safe choice. Please don't do it again. My eyebrow lifted. You're out here. I'm not alone, he said. And I'm not afraid of the things most people are afraid of in the dark. You are what most people are afraid of in the dark. I didn't mean to say that, and I had no idea where it came from. But it made Mr. Black's eyes go a little dark his friendly smile shifting into a smirk as he nodded. So you do know who I am. That sent a fresh chill down my spine. Run along, he said. You won't be bothered again. My body started moving before my brain could really process it. But as soon as I was in control, I just ran faster, confused and creeped out by the last... However long that had been, I ran and ran, keeping my head on a swivel to make sure I wasn't being followed, all the way up until I was safe in the locked confines of my home. I went straight to my kitchen, seeking a long drink of water to rehydrate and also calm myself down. While I was standing there, my gaze drifted to the window, to my view up the hill, at the ultra-modern house that sat at the top. As I stared, two tiny figures moved in the distance, illuminated by the moon, one on two legs, one on four. Oh, shit. 
that, Mr. Black?